Hey, what's up everyone? Back here with episode 3, season 1 of Market Movers. Had a video up yesterday about my experiences online with Target and the Friday drop. They dropped 8 products overall, 7 football. Check that video out if you want to see, you know, like if you haven't tried Target.com lately to try to obtain some sports cards. See what kind of luck I had. Spoiler alert, not much. Got some Bowman Mega Boxes, but that wasn't a huge accomplishment. Those were on the site for about two and a half, three hours. Oh, playoff edition here. Whew. Forgot how long these series lasted. It's two weeks since I did the last video. During that last video, I mentioned coming back in about a week, but I decided to wait and see how things played out with the first round. Now, I'm filming this video early morning, Sunday, June 6th. So depending on when you're seeing this, obviously I don't have any idea about Game 7 between the Clippers and Mavericks. That'll move the needle, obviously, a little bit for some players. But let's be honest, the way the market is going right now, how many of you guys are really buying? I think, by and large, I should say some people are probably looking to make some plays. We'll go through who's hot and who's not here real quick. But who honestly is looking to purchase in this market? It's what I alluded to in my last video was you almost have to be sitting on a guy and he pops off and then you unload the stuff to purchase somebody. Say Luca goes off in game seven or Kawhi goes off in game seven. Are you going to look at purchasing his cards knowing that their next round matchup is going to be pretty tough against Utah? Are you a long-term speculator or just a short-term flipper? So let's take a look here. Last 14 days we're looking at here, since it's been 14 days since I've done a video. You see the raw cards here. I'll have the graded as well, both hot and cold. Chase Young's 2020 Mosaic Base Raw, 700% it's up. CD Lamb, same set, 453%. Luis Robert, for whatever reason, his 2020 Base Raw, up 417%, from a little over 2 bucks to 11 bucks. Trey Young's 2020 Prism Flashback. So you see you got a lot of random stuff in here. LeBron James, 2020 Revolution Base Raw. You see big gains on that as well. It's totally random stuff, as I said. LaVisca Chenault, 2020 Select. And he was a curious case because in the last video, I can't recall what specific cards it was, but some of his cards were up, some of his cards were down. Interesting, right? Tim Duncan, 1997 Fleer Base Raw, 350% up. In the last 14 days. Interesting that you're saying that a Tim Duncan 1997 Fleer rookie could have been had for $1.25. That's 16 sales of that. Some of this data kind of questionable in my opinion just based on maybe like the supply that's on the market. I, I can't imagine you could have picked up a Tim Duncan raw for $1.25. Sancho it's 2018 Donruss raw up 315%. James Harden, his Panini base raw, up 303%. We'll see what happens because of what you may know is after game one, Harden went out within the first minute. Take a look at some graded cards here over the last 14 days. And within Market Movers, I just selected graded cards only. I didn't limit it only to PSA. Derek Jeter's Upper Deck Foil, BGS 9. You see it's been up 116%, so it's more than doubled. Again, past 14 days, so it's gone from $1,800 or $1,850 to a $4,000 card, only on 12 sales. Trey Young, prison base for his second year. Trey Young's emergent, Bo Bichette's tops base, PSA 10, nearly doubled as well. It went from $53 to $105. Barry Bonds, Fleer base 9 for his rookie card, nearly doubled as well, going from $24.50 to about $48. See more Trey Young, his prism... Silver PSA 9 went from $28 to 52 And again, that's a second year card. Troy Aikman's tops traded. It's a PSA 9. Went from 24 to 44 Kai Havertz, Tony Gwynn, Zion Williamson, all up about 77, 78, 80%. So you can see here. Now let's see who is cold. Since this is an NBA video, by and large, I was going to do some individual charts for some of these guys. But some of them... Not needed. I was going to look at all the playoff teams and kind of like the major stars, teams that are moving on, and even the ones that got eliminated. But you see here, R.J. Barrett, Raw, down big time, 87%. Jimmy Butler's Hoops, base Raw, 
down 85%. That's a dollar card now. A Jimmy Butler, 2012 Hoops Base Raw, a dollar. <laughs> the dollar bin. Michael Jordan's 1992 Upper Deck Fanimation. Brandon Clark's Prison Base Raw, down to a buck. Josh Jacobs, Prism Base Raw. LeBron's 2016 Donruss, Base Raw. You know that card, right? Down to $5. Started the past 14 days at $25. Now it's down to $5. Darius Baisley, that dude had a ton of hype. His Prism Base Raw, $4. Down to a buck. I was paying about $4 for those, I think $3 maybe prior to the season. I bought into the hype. Austin Riley, it's kind of a surprise to see his card down so much. It's Archives rookie, Lonzo Ball. <laughs> Poor guy, can't catch a break. 2017 prison base run. Really, he didn't have such a bad year. Down from $16 all the way to $4. Whew. All right, let's check the graded cards out. Given the raw values, a little bit of what you expected. Maybe RJ Barrett there at the top, his prison base nine and his prism silver BGS 9.5. Both down over 57%. Prism Silver BGS 9.5 now can be had for $93 when it was $216 to start the week. Uh, Jason Dominguez, John Morant, Joe Burrow taking a hit big time. 52% for his Mosaic Base 9. Interesting. Hmm. Jaws Mosaic Base BGS 9 down over 50%. Kendrick Nunn is 2019 Optics. Same thing. Thibel. Again, another guy. He and Nunn, I should say, getting hyped before the NBA season. We'll see if that hype train gets back on the tracks again for these guys. Glaber Torres is 2018 tops Chrome Base 10, halved from $80 to $40. Zion Williamson is Prism Draft Silver. Secondary photo, it says here. Again, value cut in half from $49 to $24. And then at Kemba Walker, 2012 Prism Base 9, went from $60 all the way down to $30. Whew, bloodbath out there. All right, so let's get into individual players now. We'll kind of buzz through these pretty quickly. I just wanted to show you guys some numbers, and I'll have some charts and everything at the end, but Joel Embiid, his prison base BGS9, is pretty interesting, right? Up 31% in the last 14 days, but his prison base 10, down 22%, to where the 10 in the prism, they're telling me, now is $510. But the BGS 9.5 is 412. It's a little closer than you would expect to see, right? Why is the BGS 9.5 getting so much more respect than the PSA 10? And overall, what I'm wondering, and this may be a trend if I repeat myself in this video, it's, again, speculation, but are people baked into the cake? And obviously we know the market's slumping big time. But is the expectation there? Obviously he has his injury. And we don't know when we're going to see him again. We'll have to see if another update next week or two weeks, what happens. But are people baking it into the cake? Not so much him, but Ben Simmons, which I'll do next, is they expect them to win or they expect them to lose. You're kind of projecting ahead in a way. I don't know. Sellers and buyers, maybe. That's just some thought I had instead of gauging things on what's happened now. You're trying to project ahead as to what's going to happen. A lot of people are now are talking that without Embiid, or if he's out for the whole series, that they don't see the 76ers getting past the Hawks. Interesting, right? When the talk just two weeks ago was, oh, the Knicks, the Knicks. I saw something where they had a panel of writers and there were 18, I believe, and the whole panel would predict each series. And this series, the Knicks and Hawks, and it was the Clippers and Mavericks, I believe, and then the Lakers and Suns, where it was everybody but one person had the Knicks winning, had the Lakers winning, and had the Clippers winning. The Clippers still have a chance, of course, but it's interesting that you go from a situation where the Hawks aren't even expected to survive the first round to now where people are telling me, oh, well, Philly's in trouble now. So Ben Simmons here on the screen. He got his Prism 2016. It's a base card, of course. PSA 10. You see the chart there. On May 23rd, this card was $244. Went up to $273 on May 29th. And now take a look. All the way down to $201. So it spiked just about a week ago at 273 
all the way down to 201. Again, people just speculating on their chances of losing to the Hawks and again, just the market in general getting drugged down. Team that was eliminated quite easily, <laughs> if not for the Embiid injury, perhaps a sweep, Bradley Beal. Got the last 30 days on him here. Do you see his card, his Prism PSA 10? It's about $600 all the way down to $353. And then his BGS 9.5 from 315, all the way down to $128. Take a look here, where you see the BGS 9.5 down 59%. And the Prism Base PSA 10 down 42%. Quite a hit from a guy that's a really solid player. But again, team got eliminated. Brutal. Russell Westbrook, Similar trend last 30 days, not too much of his stuff out there on the market. You see his PSA 9 Chrome Rookie here, 2008. Only 260 of these on the market. You kind of see a little, little bit of a rise here. I don't know exactly what the dates were. This, I would imagine, was about the time where they, where they won the play-in game and got that 8 seed. It makes you wonder, though, because <laughs> what's the logic? You... Saw a little bit of a spike here. He got up above 600, maybe right around 650. But what did people think was going to happen when they went to play Philadelphia? Obviously, you could speculate some injuries. Had the Embiid injury happen in game one, who knows? Like I said here, 650. And that was on May 23rd. Fast forward about 10 days. We're down 55%. All the way down to $224. dollars i show you the last seven days. You can get a better idea even though it had spiked a little bit before then but in the last seven days you see it go from about 360 to that 224 dollar price point so russell westbrook triple double machine <laughs> mr inefficiency got some trey young stuff here last seven days as i said the surprise of the hawks winning people didn't expect it now does that shift the other direction though now that people are kind of feeling the hawks because of the Embiid injury if he and the Hawks don't win that series, is it a double whammy? Because you have a situation here where perhaps there's this psychology built into it already that the Hawks are expected to win, that people are pricing it as if they're already moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. So is it going to be a situation where a Philly pulls off the upset now? And in your minds, I'm sure you're like, upset. Was, it's just been what I've been hearing. that People are really feeling the Hawks now because of the injury. I don't know. The Hawks are <laughs> still a little bit shady to me. So you see here, Trey Young. These are our base and graded cards. So you see some of this stuff, 50%, but most of the stuff you're seeing is up 30, 25, 24, 22. Just random stuff. Prison base 10, second year. You see his emergent here. Rookie card up 24% from 62 to 77, but it's not all positive. This was 25 cards. You see here, six of the cards are down, so they're not all up. That's six out of 25. 19 of the cards were up, six down. Again, just random stuff, but you see his Prism Base 10 here, rookie card, just down 4% from 325 to 309, but you would expect more of a bump after that surprise in the first round versus the Knicks. Prism Base 8, same thing, down 9%, and his Select Concourse, PSA 9 down 10% as well. It's kind of surprising, right? Just random stuff goes up and rookie cards going down. Giannis, huge game tonight. Chris Middleton kind of stunk it up. Or I should say last night, Saturday night. Even when Harden went down, they still were down 15 points with a minute 20 to go in the game. They made it a little bit closer. So if you see the final score, you might be like, whoa, whoa, close game. But was it really garbage time? It tightened up a little bit. When I saw that Harden went down and it was halftime and the Nets were only up two, I was like, this is their game. This is their shot right here. Obviously, we don't know what Harden situation is going to be, but it's kind of deflating, I think, to people on a team where one of their superstars goes down and kind of pick it up. Interesting question being raised, though, is with Harden going down, obviously it's a loss or you could chalk it up as a loss, but... What does it do, right? Harden, when you have KD and Kyrie, 
you're in a unique position. Now, granted, if one more of those guys goes down, say KD goes down the next game, then that'll be it for the Nets. When Harden goes down, 10 more shots for KD, 10 more for Kyrie. Are you really losing much? Obviously, great to have that third option. But you see here, Giannis, his hoops base PSA 10 rookie card, 2013, up 5%. His hoops base PSA 9, also up a few percent. But that's really it. There's just 12 cards in here on him. And again, this is the last seven days. So you see most of his stuff is down. His prestige base, it's about break even. His SP Authentic PSA 9, down about 10%. PSA 10, down 11%. Prestige base PSA 9, again, down over 10%. The prison base PSA 10, down over 10%. Now it's a sub $2,000 card. Giannis, I think people, <laughs> he didn't even see a bump after the first series, right? So I guess people expected them to go out in this round. So if they go out, then perhaps you see more of a sell-off. But I wonder, like I was speculating about with teams and series, is is the drop, and granted you'll never know this, but is the drop not as drastic as it would have been, say Giannis was expected to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, and they came up short. Crater, right? Maybe. But since they're expected to lose this series, are you going to really see that much of a sell-off, or is it already being reflected in these prices here? KD, the last 14 days, only three cards, there's 12 on the list here, only three of his cards are up. Factory set PSA 7, that's the white one. Tops base PSA 8, up 22%. The factory set that I just mentioned, the 7's up 26%, 27 And then the tops base PSA 7, up 3.54%. So you see very little, and it's all on the lower end, the PSA 8s. And of significance, what's dropping the most, his chrome base PSA 10, you see here down 32%. A $7,600 card all the way down to $5,100. See his top space PSA 9 down 15%. The top space factory set down 15% as well. And that is in a 10. I should have said the previous one, the top space is the PSA 9. And then the factory set PSA 9 here down 11%. So on the high end, you're seeing drops. Hmm. Makes you wonder, what's he have to do? I wonder if they go to the Eastern Conference Finals and win it. Say they end up playing a vulnerable Philly team if Embiid's out for sure. Or a Hawks team that they're expected to beat easily. As they have to be heavily favored. Unless, of course, as I said, one of the big three goes down with another injury. Leaving you with just one third of the three left. Be interesting, though, to think about a situation where... Imagine the Hawks' good fortune. They get Philadelphia without Embiid. What if they end up getting the Nets without... Harden, and then maybe Kyrie goes down in the closing game of the series. Can you imagine? You're sitting out there as the Hawks, and that happens. Hmm. Obviously, you're not thinking about that if you're watching these series and knowing that they're human beings and things like that, but it's just interesting how things work out. And you can talk about Anthony Davis and Chris Paul. We'll touch on those guys a little bit later. Jason Tatum, everybody's talking about him. A lot of people are waiting for the dip on him. You see here, he's only got a few cards that are up, and this is over the last seven days. They've been eliminated. You see his Optic Shock PSA 10, up 2%. His Optic Yellow and Red, and a 9, up 2%. The Shock PSA 9, also up 2%. The Hoop Space PSA 9 is pretty much flatlined. You see a lot of the Select product here, and if you have been following the market all year long, you are sitting there like, oh, okay, well... Prism was having its issues during the season, Prism Base and Concourse, due to some timely market pushing <laughs> by certain individuals. It saw, it saw increases in season for a lot of players or even maintained steady where Prism Base was just falling off the face of the earth. Do we have a bit of a correction here? Well, this is just Tatum we're looking at, but his Select Concourse PSA 9 down 19%, and a select concourse PSA 10, down 23% over the last seven days. I was curious about Jalen Brown, given how his season ended, and I was wondering if there'd be any impact. Celtics lost overall, and he wasn't going to play anymore anyway, had they advanced. But I just wanted to see what his prices 
look like. Looking at a seven day chart here for his optic base, PSA 10, $102. For some reason, spiked up to $150. And as fast as it went up to $150, it was right back down below where it was, ending up at $75. Pretty drastic in the course of a week. What are you doing? Buying up here at $150. Who, who made that money? It was a drastic sell-off, right? Is he a guy that people target in the offseason given his injuries? And you've got to get your update on him. But is he somebody that you think about given the steps forward that he took this year? And you could say the same thing about Tatum. Both of those guys took a pretty big leap. Obviously, Brown took the bigger leap because he had further to go. But are those guys that you look at, perhaps, in terms of thinking about investing in for the short or the long term? Donovan Mitchell was interesting to me, given the whole situation that happened in Game 1. Actually turned out to be a really great move on Utah's part. Memphis stole one in Game 1. You had some people out there thinking, you know, even after Utah's win in Game 2, that perhaps Memphis was going to put up a fight. But once a healthy Mitchell came back and they got everything together... That series <laughs> ended how <laughs> it would have ended had he been there in game one, most likely, and that was with four straight Jazz wins. But he's a guy that had got some love at some points during the season. You see his last seven days here. We've got his prison base 10 on the top line here, his optic base 10 on the second line here, and then his hoops base here. About a week ago, you saw the card at $341. His optic base was at 134 and the hoops was at $87. Come to the end of the week, and what do you see here? You see the prison base just barely registering a heartbeat, just up about 2%. His optic base 10 is up 18%, and his hoops up 23%. People are really not on that prism train. They are shying away from that. But you're looking at a situation where he's got a population count of over 4,000 on that prism. And his optic base is only roughly half of that. And the hoop space even smaller. The hoop space 632. You're talking about a card that's got about one-seventh of the population count of that prism card. Now I know prism's sexy and all that stuff, and the hoops cards are kind of but population count is something that a lot of people have been talking about the last few weeks that I've seen on YouTube videos. Everybody's all over pop count. But just a final note on Mitchell though, is is he somebody? Now that you would expect Utah, you would expect them, if they stay healthy, to get past whoever comes out of that Clippers-Mavs series and possibly end up in the finals somehow, right? It's hard to bet against them when they're fully healthy. And we'll see how things materialize, but will people start to get on that train? If they start to pick up steam, say they win the first couple games of a series against whomever they play next, will we see... Donovan Mitchell cards continue to see a little bit of a rise. So you see here, John Morant seeing a rise here in some of his rookie cards. Prism, red, white, and blue up 22%. His optic base 10 up 15. Same thing with the 2019 Prism Green PSA 9 and the optic base PSA 9 both up about 15%. You see some of his stuff though is down here. It's Prism base PSA 10. Once again, the Mosaic Green select. Again there, select Concourse. Some more Prism, more Prism, Prism Silver. So you're seeing a drop on him as well. So even on the top, even if you're seeing these modest gains on him, you can't just say, hey, I saw those John Morant cards are up. John Morant played well. He showed out against Utah. You can't just say, well, everything's going to be like that across the board. You see it's about a half and half situation in terms of stuff that's up versus stuff that's down, even for a player that played well. Given the year he's had and how he looked in the playoffs, I was curious. Again, is this somebody that's a spec play for next season? If his prices dip down low enough, that's Jaron Jackson Jr. See his prison base PSA 10, taking a 28% hit. $65. Could you imagine that? It's a $65 card now. Let's take a little bit more of a look at something more longer term on him because he was out most of the year. So I'm curious to see what his last 90 and 180 look like. And again, we're just looking at the PSA 10 prism base here. It's at 143. As you saw in the previous, like the seven days, it was down to $65, but it was at 143. At that point, let's go back 180, $169. So roughly about the same. 
So it came all the way down in the last six months or let's say basically an NBA season from a $169 card down to a $65 card. Something for people to think about. Do they think that he can get back to what he was in 2019? I don't know. I'm just not touching anything right now. As I said, I'm not a hype channel. Just putting the information out there for you guys. I, I don't know if I would touch anything. I even told myself I'm not buying anything graded the rest of this year. been scooping up some singles here and there, but I'm really out of the market for a while. Again, this is being filmed before the Clippers Mavericks game seven. I wanted to take a look at Kawhi real quick and just see where he was at the last 14 days up and down series, but you see his prism based PSA 10 here down 6%, his hoops down 12% on the 10, down 14% on the 9, SP authentic, SP authentic PSA 10 down 39%. And those were the only five cards that they have listed, so he doesn't have anything that's up. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing over the last 14 days. Let's look at seven, and there we go. Look how quickly things change. That's why you got to flip back and forth between these charts, right? So a little bit of speculation there. Last 14 days, okay, let's, so let's go back. A week prior to this chart, they were hating the Clippers. And that probably came after those first two L's they took at home. But now all of a sudden, oh, the last seven days, oh, oh we like Kawhi again. Up 3% on his Prism 10. Past and present, now I'm not familiar with that card at all. And then his SP Authentic Base 9, up 53%. See the Authentic Base 10's down 23%, though. I don't... I have to question this. I get that the pop counts are what they are, but take a look here. SP Authentic base PSA 9, a 420 pop count. Again, I get the pop count, but the current value is $111 for the 9. 111. The 10, the population is about four times as many, but it's a $96 card. So you're telling me people want the 9s instead of the 10s. Again, I get the pop count, but that's why sometimes with some of this data, I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Nine's more than a 10. Luca over the last seven days, people have been really loving him. You see here, let's take a look. You see some stuff up 20%, 30%, 40%. His optic base BGS9. Again, not the first time we've seen BGS9s pop up in these charts. Emergent 10, that's up to 200, up from a buck 50. Interesting. Let's scroll through and try to find that Prism base PSA 10. You see his Revolution base PSA 10 is up from 390 to 427. Again, last seven days. There we go. The Prism 9's roughly about even. Freshman Phenom's up a little bit. Prism base, there you are. Down from 924 to 895. So down slightly. Obviously, if they win game seven, you'll see a bump, but that was a $2,000 card prior to the season or during that height and period in March, right? It was a $2,000 card at one point, or roughly about $2,000. The Unicorn, hey, I had to look. It's prison base PSA 10. What can you say? He's down 20% from $125 to $100. I picked up one of his Hoops rookies prior to the season. I paid... I think I paid 80 bucks for it. I'd be surprised if that thing is worth half of that right now. Jokic, last seven days, this is the only thing that's up here, is this Prism Base 9, up about 6 to 7% from 291 to 311. I, in my last video, I alluded to the fact that I thought that Portland was in good position to win that series. I underestimated the Nuggets. I thought that Portland had a shot to win that one. But then again, I thought that the Suns had reason to be concerned about the Lakers. I assumed the Lakers would be fully healthy, of course. And then after Paul got hurt, oh, we're having this discussion here. I'll look at LeBron and them later. When Paul got hurt, I was like, uh-oh. And trust me, I'm not a Laker fan. So <laughs> I was not stunned at all to see them go out the way they did. But you see with Jokic here, now that they've moved on, a lot of people, again, they're on that Suns bandwagon. If there's a situation where they get through the Suns and get to the Western Conference Finals, do we continue to see a rise? And I'm kind of wondering, again, what I alluded to is people expecting them to lose, do we see this precipitous drop in his cards in the event that they do lose? If they get swept, I could see it, but say it's a good series, maybe go six. Do we see a big hit to Jokic's cards? MPJ, somebody that they're definitely going to need to step up in round two if they're going to have a shot against the Suns, but you see here, everything of his is up. His optic base PSA 10, up about 25%. 
The prism red, white, and blue, 21%. It's silver, up 16%. And it's prism-based PSA 10, up 10%. Now he's a guy maybe that's primed for a fall if they lose and if he doesn't play well. If they win, though, shh, probably see that stuff shoot up a little more. Spec plays, though, I wonder, curious, always curious about the numbers. I'm just a nerd like that. I wonder how things go when these guys lose and if we'll see that dip and then that increase like we've seen in football a little bit after the season and kind of the run-up, which is the same thing we saw prior to the start of the 2020-2021 season. Taking a look at Damian Lillard here, last seven days. Again, as I said, I was a little surprised that they went out the way they did that they didn't even get to a Game 7 against the Nuggets. Slept on the Nuggets. Take a look at a 90-day chart real quick, and you can probably see this for most players, right? We knew the spike happened around mid to late March. Some guys spiked in April. But for Lillard, you see his prison base way back on March 10th. It was a $1,600 card. And even here, in early May, it spiked to $1,700. A $1,700 card in early May basically cut in half, down 48%. You've got his select PSA 10 over the same period, down 10%, and his hoops base PSA 10 down 41%. So what I said, right, select in season fared a lot better than prism. Perhaps we're seeing some of that change now. People are waiting to cash out, trying to move on to the next thing, realizing that they did well with select, but the overall market's still getting drugged down. Last 30 days, you see here, a little bit of a spike in May, and then right back on down again. Devin Booker, the darling of Game 6. Last 7 days is Hoops Base PSA 10, up 75%, to a $315 card. And again, my recollection is that this card was about that value to start the season. BGS 9.5 Prism, up 41%. His Hoops Base 9, up 33%. Let's take a look at this Hoops Base 10 over six months because I do believe that that was at least a $300 card to start the season. There you go. I underestimated it. It was at one point, look, we had it was a $439 card. Spiked all the way up to $500 during that March time frame. And then hit a low of $157. This card went from... 500 all the way down to $157 but then in the past week shot up to $250 from 500 to $150 two month period brutal here's a season long chart on Booker and his prism based PSA 10 so you saw the hoops you see the prism here Whoo, baby, look at that roller coaster ride down, up, 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 down, and then boom, back up. But again, you see, to start the season, $1,300 card. That looks about the highest point it was. So it went from a $1,300 card, essentially cut in half down to $638, and then it just shot back up over $800. If they pull off another series win, how much does that impact its card prices? Would he jump another 10, 20, 30 percent? 47 point games tend to do that to you, right? DeAndre Ayton, seen a little bump on some of his stuff. His prison based PSA 10 up to $100. That's up 20 percent. The optic based PSA 10 also up about 20 percent. And his optic based PSA 9 up 40 percent. Funny enough, I paid about $170 for some of these prior to the season. Not at like the total height, but. Ooh, baby, it got up to about $200, $210, I believe. We're going to need DeAndre Ayton in the NBA Finals just for me to break even. See that chart there? That's what I was talking about. Roughly approaching about a $200 card. Just kept sliding and sliding. A little bit of a bump here. And then just look at that trend line. Straight on down. Chris Paul, they didn't have too much on him. I was a little surprised to see his top space PSA 9. Population of only 140. That card dropped to $120. Be interesting to see if we run this chart again in two weeks, if they're doing well, or even if they lose that series, how that looks. Anthony Davis. Does this look <laughs> familiar? This reminds me of the stock market back in March of 2020, 
right off a cliff. This card, at one point, back at the beginning of the season, about a $2,700 card right here, and even here, up to $2,800. Look at this card now. From $2,800 all the way down to $800. He went from $2,800 March 1st, essentially three months later, to $800. From $2,800 to $800. That's something. The guy, I mean, he, what can you say? Injuries, right? He could be, or he could have been, or he's still got time. He just can't stay healthy. My God, $2,800 all the way down to $800. I, I don't even know if I'd touch the guy's card still. LeBron here, you see some random stuff going up. 2019 Prism, 2018 Revolution, PSA 9, Select Concourse, 9, a Mosaic Base PSA 10 on the rise. What I'm looking for here with this guy, though, is the one that people have been talking about is his Chrome. There we go. Chrome Base, there's the 9. It's down 12%. You see the tops PSA 10 up 8% from $5,000 to $5,400. But it's tops base 9. It's flat line, maybe down a little bit. Flare base PSA 10 down. Again, people are talking saying, hey, these cards are just going to keep sliding and sliding, especially the way that they went out. I think there was a lot of expectation that when Anthony Davis came back, you know, to start the series that they were going to be okay. And when LeBron came back, when they got together, started the playoffs, right? So it's, again, it's the hype train, right? It's the expectation that causes a sharper sell-off or the lack of expectations as with the Hawks, where you see an increase in their prices, unexpected. You see the nine here down 12%. As I said, it's down to about $4,400. We'll run this in a couple weeks again and see what these numbers look like. Got a chart here. Don't look so much at the dollar figures because we're comparing a Chrome 10 here on the purple line to just the base 10. So you saw the Chrome, and this was 30 days ago. So we were looking back a month. You see the Chrome here at 23,000 and the paper version was 7,000. You see the paper, it's been somewhat on the downtrend, of course, but it's maintained it's been a little more consistent, right? You can tell the trend line here. You can see it for yourself. The Chrome went down from 23000 to about $15,000. And the paper, as I said, it was about a $7,000 card down to about 5400 You see here, real percentage change. The Chrome down 36% and the paper down 22%. All right, so I was curious. I did a little bit of this in my video last time. I was wanting to see if there was any kind of Hall of Fame bump. I showed these charts last time. Look at these Chris Bosch cards. You're telling me that a Chrome at one point was, what is that, $1,200, $1,300? Look at it now. It's dipped down all the way under $300. That's a 90-day chart, but let's look at a 30-day chart. Let's see if there's a Hall of Fame bump. And we'll just end on this. There's one other player. We're going to wrap it up. This video is super long. I'll let you guys go here. I appreciate it if you made it this far. Give me a thumbs up if you want to see more. Throw a like, a sub my way. If you want to see any players, like I say in any video, just let me know. Any guys that I haven't covered, basketball now focused probably for the next few weeks to a month, playoff-wise, but let me know if you're curious about anybody, if there's anybody you're looking at for coming up to spec on for the next season. If you want to see their charts, just let me know. I'll hook that up for you guys. All right, where's the Hall of Fame bump? Mm, is it here? Is it, oh, wait, but, oh, wait, was it here? Oh, okay. Well, let's look at one more. Looking at Chris Weber. Hmm. We're looking at his finest 10, which is here on the blue line. And then his finest base raw, pretty consistently about $16, $17. Finest base, finest PSA 10. That's a lot. I love that finest set from 93. That 94 set, though, was kind of like, hmm. But, hmm, no Hall of Fame bump. Hmm. Interesting. I was thinking there might be one. For Bosch and Weber, not so much for Ben Wallace. I don't even know if he has stuff out there. All right, so thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and again, let me know if you want to see anything. Be well, everyone. The markets are moving, and they're moving in the wrong direction. All right, everyone, be well.